Hey kids, welcome to another video. This is for Eureka Math Grade 5, and we are now starting Module 2. Hooray! This is Lesson 1. Lots of introductory material before we jump into the lesson, so get those notebooks ready. The objective here is almost like we're starting Lesson Module 1 in the beginning over again. So we're multiplying multi-digit whole numbers, just like we did before. We're using multiples of 10 and place value patterns. And now we're gonna be talking about these new properties to help us with our whole numbers. So what are properties? So this is what I call poster day. You can make a poster in your notebook using uh, these properties and make it all pretty. And so properties mean it's a mathematical term that means you can count on on it working every single time. You don't have to test it or say, well, will it work this time? Yes, it's gonna work every time. So we've worked with a couple different properties. The one that we used mostly in module one was the commutative property, meaning I could switch the places of my factors and I will get the same product no matter what. You can also use it with addition. It only works with addition and multiplication though. Okay, so we can't just switch the order in division and subtraction. Another uh, property, in fact, two other properties we're gonna use today are called the associative and distributive. So associative, if you think about who do you associate with, it's gonna be the people you hang out with, your buddies. And so it's kind of similar to that because you're grouping. So it's a grouping property like, well, if I group these two and I have two times five times three as my problem and I first get 10 and then have 10 times three is 30, it will work out the same as instead of doing two and five together, what if I group five and three together? So the associative property means you can group different numbers together and you'll still end up with the same product. It also works with addition, just the same way that the commutative property works with addition and multiplication only. But today we're also gonna talk about the distributive property. So in distributing a number, it means you're taking it apart and talking about place value a lot. So for example, if I have something like five times 347, each digit in this number will be multiplied by five, but you can separate them so that you have all these zeros. And that's gonna help you when you are adding up these partial products and it just makes everything a whole lot easier when, um, when you're lining things up and to get your products. Now, this is something fourth graders are often very comfortable with because uh, they've used it before. And so then when they move up to fifth grade, it's like, oh, do I have to use the standard algorithm? I really like separating things. So that's kind of your fallback. The distributive property can help you. So uh, how about the notes here for today's lesson? The distributive property, again, just like on the little poster that you could make, take apart each digit and multiply it by this one factor. So here's how you can do it. But in today's lesson, we're also going to be working with unit form. So you really have to know your place value positions because they're gonna have you writing things by place value position and labeling it in unit form. The important thing I want you to catch today is that when you multiply, you'll always have this same product in the first part of your answer, but we're gonna be looking at the word form of the numbers and how to label it appropriately with the unit or how many zeros will be in the final product. So here are some great notes that can help you with practicing and then this final little bit here, focus. And um, the warning, warning part about this lesson is what happens when your product for the initial two factors has a zero in it. For example, six times five is 30. This product already has a zero. So depending on if you're multiplying with a 10 or with 100 or 1000, you would then have an appropriate number of zeros that come after it. Again, like here, instead of 60 times five, it's 60 times 50. The six times the five will give you a product with a zero, 30. And then you're gonna take the 10 from here and the 10 from here, and that would be 100, but your answer isn't 300, it's 3000, because there's already a zero here 
and two from this one. Same here when it's eight times five is 40. You have to watch out when your first um, problem and it gives you a zero in your product and then count how many additional zeros would be in all the other tens combined in order to end up with the correct number of zeros. Now, if that's all as clear as mud, then let's get into the book and I'll keep these notebooks handy in case I want to show you something from, from the poster or from our practice work, but we just have a lot to do today, so let's get into it. So you need to fill in the blanks using your knowledge of place value units, unit form, and basic facts, just like in lesson one from module one. So if I have 23 times 20, we're gonna think about these unit forms. And if I have 23 ones, because this is in the ones place, and I have two tens, okay, then how many, remember to watch out for the equal signs, how many total tens would I have? So right here, I want you to look at 23 times two equals how many? And then I also want you to pay attention to ones times tens equals, here's our unit answer, so your label. So let's take just the numbers, two times three is six, and two times two is four. And if I have 23 ones times two tens, I would end up with 46 tens. Now in standard form, 23 times 20 is gonna give you 460 because 46 tens would end up with the six in the tens place, but that still leaves a zero in the ones place. So you have to think about, again, like I said in the intro, the unit form, the standard form answer, and how many zeros are going to be in your product. Okay, let's do another one. Notice that it's the 23 again and the two again. Watch out for how many zeros because they're gonna change it each time. So now they want you to think about 23 tens. Okay, so they're adding a zero there, which means it's 230. This one hasn't changed, it's still two tens, two tens but it's still 23 times two. So we know it's still 46, but this time it's tens times tens. So what is your label? Hundreds, 46 hundreds. So if I have this, then take your 23 times two to give you your 46, and this zero and this zero would make two zeros here. So you would have 46 hundreds, 46 hundred, or 4,600 as some people would want to say because that's more familiar. So let's move on to another one and hopefully you can catch on to this pattern. So if I have 41 ones and then I also have four ones, take those numbers and multiply four times one is four and four times four is 16. So if I have ones times ones, I will get ones as my label. And so when I, I have my standard form answer, I'll just get the 164 because 164 ones looks like this. This is in the ones place. Same numbers except some additional zeros. So now I have 41 tens because we've got the additional zero and four hundreds. So now I know I still have 164, but what's the label? What's tens times hundreds? Or if I had 10 times 100, what would I get? How many zeros would I have? You might say I'd get a thousand and I'd say, hooray, thousand, not the th, thousands, okay? So when you look at your final answer, the, the Straight multiplication here is still gonna give you the 164, don't change that. But how many zeros are we having? Remember, when whole numbers are being calculated, you can count the zeros, one, two, three, one, two, three. So I have 164,000 because I have 10 times 100 to make 1,000. Let's do another one. So now they're taking away our digits, but they're giving you the unit form. Very nice. So how many tens do I have? How many 
tens do I have? I have 331 tens because it's all of this times how many hundreds? That's just this. And they did the multiplication, so we know that 3 times 1 is 3, and then 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 is 9. So our three, 993 is fine, but I need the unit form answer. Tens times hundreds, and we did that here, so that would be thousands. Okay, and DS, not TH, because these are whole numbers. And so our final answer for our standard form is going to have the 993 thousands okay as your answer so you're taking your unit form and making it standard form last one how many hundreds for the first one and how many hundreds for the second one easy peasy five times six but watch out because this these factors create a product with a zero. And if I have hundreds times hundreds, what will I get? How many zeros is that? Well, one times one is one, and then I have one, two, three, four zeros. One, two, three, four zeros. That makes 10,000. So I'm gonna write 30, 10 thousands. DS, because this is still whole numbers. So watch out for your standard form, five, times 6 makes 30, and then we have 100 here times 100 here, 100 and 100. That's the 100, that's the 100. Now what's your final answer? 300,000. Okay, I hope it's kind of making sense. I hope you're catching on. I know it's kind of a tough concept, kind of weird. It's helpful uh, for mental math strategies. So if you can separate things out and then just count like place value positions. So number two says determine, that means figure out if these equations are true or false. Now you could put true or false, but that doesn't really mean anything. The actual answer is you defending your answer. So you can't just put T or F, that's not done. Defend your answer using your knowledge of place value and the commutative, associative, and or distributive properties. So let's take a look. If I have six tens, I always like to do a little solving on these because it, it seems easier to me to see the number form. So if I have six tens, okay, six times 10 would be 60. And so if I have two tens, that's going to be 20. And three tens, that's going to be 30. So if I have 20 times 30, that'll give me the six all right. But this zero means this would be here. And this zero means this would be here. So that, in fact, is not equal. So this one is false, okay, because six tens is not equal to six hundreds. And, and that should be enough of an explanation to show because again, 10 times 10 will give you 100. Moving right along, if watch out, this is a balance sign. Everything is trying to balance. Is the value on the left the same as the value on the right? So if I have 44 times two times one, and then I have a zero here and a zero here, and then I have a 44 times two, and we know anything times one will uh, be that number, but here I have a zero and here I have a zero. So I actually have 100 on this side and I only have 10 on this side. So again, it's off by one place value position, okay? So the 44 is equal sorry, the 44 times two is equal on both sides, but the 10 does not equal the 100. So that's the difference right there. So this one is also false. Okay, so let's look at 86 ones times 90 hundreds and then 86 ones, which is the same, times 900 tens. So if I have 
90 hundredths, notice that 86 ones is the same on both sides. So if it's the same on both sides, I could move ahead without calculating that and just focus on what's left. So what is 90 hundredths? What is 90 hundredths? Is it equal to 900 tens? So what do I get here? Well, I have 9,000. What do I get here? Hmm, I have 9,000. So this is equal. So this is true. If you show the tens and the hundreds being multiplied, you can solve that. Let's do the last one here, D, before we turn. I think there's more on the back. 64 times 8 times 100. 640 times 8 times 10. Again, if you just take out the digits with value and leave the tens behind, first of all, we can take the eights out right away because those are exactly the same on both sides. Now, the other thing you can do that's kind of tricky and students get real confused is I say, here's a 10 and here's a 10. But here's a 10 and here's a 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, and this 10 times 10 would be 100. And so I'm looking at the number of zeros, and I'm seeing that I have two zeros here, and I have two zeros here, and everything else is going to be 64 times 1. So that actually is true as well. Okay, because we'll get 64 hundred on both sides. And so that will work out as true. Let's do some more. We have two more pages, but we can do it. Hang in there. Hopefully my Wi-Fi will stay on. Hopefully my computer will stay on. Hopefully my lights will stay on. Yay, I gotta make the motion sensor move. Okay, just a little proactive keeping the lights on in here. Next one, look at here's the equal sign. We have to stay balanced. So how many tens do I have on both sides? I've got a 57 and a two, and a one, and a 57, and a two, and a one, and I have a zero here, and here, and here, that's three zeros, and I have a zero here, and a zero here, that's two zeros. And so basically what you do is you say, well, 1,000 does not equal 100, and so this one is also false, okay? Let's do more. Now this looks kind of crazy and you're probably going, oh, heaven help me, what do I do with this? It's actually really easy. I'll show you how to do it. You're gonna find the products, okay? But they're actually giving you the same basic product throughout. So that's nice, they don't change it. You just have to show your thinking and then add a little bit each time. So basic fact first, okay, basic fact comes first, and then we're going to take apart or distribute some of these numbers to help us solve in an easier way. So let's take 45 times three. First, we have to get our basic fact answer. Three times five is 15, carry the one. Three times four is 12, plus one is 13. So we have 135 as our basic fact answer. So for this one, we're gonna take our, we can do 45, times three, and then we can do 45 times 10. And that can work. You can also separate each part out um, to make everything simpler. Uh, let's see, I can show you that one. Um, if I do like four in the tens, let's just do or. Four times 10 plus five times one, let's say if, you're wanna, if you wanna separate out this, okay? And you also have to multiply that by the three times 10 in order to get the 30. So we're multiplying that all. So if you have the 45 times three, that's going to give you the 135 that we need for our basic fact. So nothing is really new here, but we do have to figure out then how to get that last piece. So uh, times the 30, sorry, now I'm over here, 135 times 30. And so 135 times three, 
uh, sorry. Boop. Let me go back up here. So if I have 45 times three, this is my 135. Let me hop down here. One, 135. I need to focus on what I'm doing. And then the 45 times 10 is gonna be the 450. Heavens, heaven help me. I love it when I'm doing all this crazy stuff and then I have to erase it and you're like, thanks for making me erase everything. Okay, back to the beginning. Sorry, sometimes I haven't done these in like a whole year and then I start it and I'm all, oh, I am messing things up. Okay, take it apart. 45 times three. And then multiply this and get your 135. And we need to show where this is coming from. And so that's where the 10 is. And now we have our 1350. <sighs> You're welcome. See how brilliant I am? I just love these. So we're just gonna take it apart and show each of the basic facts. I won't show you anything additional today. Um, and just count those zeros. Take this apart. So again, 45 times three. Take this times this, okay? But we also have 10 and 10 here. So we still have our basic fact and we still have these two zeros right here for a total of 100. So your final answer should be 13,500. So notice that if I continue the pattern, it's just gonna be, wow, it sounds like a jet outside. That's really loud. <laughs> you can probably hear it on the video. 1,350, then 13,500, and then finally, I wasn't sitting here making a video, I'd run outside and check it out because that just sounds cool. And then a 10 times 100 for the last one. Keep that basic fact the same. Then one times one is one, and then at one, two, three zeros. There you go. Now we have 135 times 1,000, 135, zero, zero, zero. Okay, clear as mud. Just kidding, it's super fun. So next one, watch out because the basic fact has a zero. So we have four times five for 20 and the extra zero, so it's 200. So we have our 40 times five that has the extra 10. Let's do 40 times 50. Four times five is our basic fact but we also have a 10 here and we have a 10 here. So here's your 20 and here's your 100 and now we have 2,000. So notice that each time we get a partial product, we're working our way towards that final product which should be increasing in value by a little bit. Four times five first and then times 10 times 100. 20 times a thousand and then 20 and one, two, three. Thousand. Don't forget your commas when it has lots of digits. Last one. Four times five times 100 times a thousand. This has a lot of zeros. First, get your partial product. Then one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Put your zeros in. Now it's 100,000. Don't forget this one. So it's 20. And then one, two, three, four, five. So you should end up with 2 million. Okay. Let's do another one. Now here is uh, a larger uh, problem. So we have to get the basic fact first. 
8 times 2 is 16, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 times 7 is 14, 1,436. And you can also, if you see different sections, we've spent a, a little bit of time on this, you could do 700 times 2, and then 18 times 2. And so that could be your 1,400, and this could be your 36. So if it helps you to kind of break it up, you can use that method too. Uh, I just really prefer the standard algorithm. So here we have our 718 times 2. And then we have times 10 times 10 because of this 0 here and this one here. So here's our basic fact. Just copy it 1436 times 100. 1436 and the hundred. So you should have 143,600. Sorry for the crampy space. Basic fact, 718 times 2 times uh, 10 and two zeros right there. And so basic fact, 1436 times 1,000 and one, four, three, six, zero, zero, zero. Now we're in the millions, 1,436,000. And the last one, 718 times two for your basic fact. How many zeros here? Two. How many zeros here? Three. Lots of zeros. So basic fact, 1436 times 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100,000. So it's going to be still 1, 4, 3, 6, don't separate those at all, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put your commas in every 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 143 million, 600,000. Have you ever made such big numbers before? Probably not until now. All right, let's try to finish this up. Ripley told his mom that multiplying whole numbers by multiples of 10 was easy because you just count the zeros in the factors and put them in the product. Now, he used two examples, these two examples, to explain his strategy. His mom said it will not always work, so why not and give an example. Now, we know that counting the zeros works great. If I've got 7 times 6 and I get 42... Hooray. And this has three zeros, and this has two, and that's correct. That makes five. And eight times seven. But the example when it doesn't work is going to be if there's a zero in the basic product, like 80 times 50. Okay? Then I have 40, which has a zero in it. Okay? If this is my first partial product, I still have to multiply the 10 from here times the 10 from here. And so those two will give me 100. And when I multiply 40 times 100, I will get 4,000. So you can't just say two zeros in the original problem would be two zeros at the end because it's not. This has three zeros in the final product. And it has the three zeros because this one is the zero from the original product. 40 is the original product. These are the two zeros from the problem uh, with the multiplying and the tens, the counting the zeros. So this would be a good example of what, what to watch out for. How about number five? The Canadian side of Niagara Falls, oh, thank you for focusing, has a flow rate of 600,000 gallons per second. How many gallons of water flow over the falls in one minute? So, well, if we look at one minute equaling 60 seconds, okay, and then we have the 600,000, <laughs> fancy zero, times 60, then what we can do is we can take our sixes out, and then we can multiply that by the five zeros from here, Okay, oops, sorry, 100,000, I'm a zero short, and I put the comma in, 
There we go. One, two, three, four, five. And the 10 from here. Okay, so all those are there. Finish that off. Get your 36. And then you've got how many? So this is going to be 1 times 1 is 1. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 36 times a million. So guess what? You get 36 million. Because we have six zeros at the end. Six zeros. So 36 million gallons per minute. Okay, and that's your final answer there. And number six. Oh yeah, quick subscribe. Watch me fumble around with our math videos. It's always fun. Tickets to a baseball game are $20 for an adult and $50, $15 for a student. A school buys tickets for 45 adults and 600 students. Ooh, fun. How much money will the school spend for all the tickets? So you have to look at the different prices and we're going to have the $20 for the adults, and then how many? So it's $20 times 45 adults. But we also have to add in the cost of the $15 for the 600 students, okay? And that's gonna be different. So you can separate these out by doing a 45 times two, and then times 10, you can do that in one step because we've already multiplied everything, okay? And so 45 times two is 90, and then you can multiply by 10. That'll be our first step there, okay? Here, I'm gonna do 15 times six, and then we also have to have our times, oops, times 100, because that's all that's left. Consider that. And so uh, start working that out. 15 times six is 90. And so here we have nine times one is nine and then two zeros. And then here we have nine times one is nine and three zeros. And so the total, if 9,000 plus 900 is $9,900. That's a lot of money that the school is spending. The school spends $9,900 on tickets. I hope this was helpful and not too long. So we'll see you on the next one. Come on back again. Bye.